Yo guys, what is up? Max and our Dragon's Dogma 2 video, and today we're going over my build guide for the Magic Archer. Now, Magic Archer, in my opinion, is an S-tier vocation. Uh, the Magic Archer, Mystic Spearhand, and Thief are, in my opinion, the S-tiers. I'll have like a full video on that later. Um, but I want to talk about Magic Archer because not only is it incredibly powerful, uh, but there's some cool tricks that you can do with it. We're going to be going over how to unlock it, uh, the best bows and where to get them, how to get the most damage out of this class, and some tips and tricks for playing it. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. So to start, how to unlock the Magic Archer. Well, once you get to the town Bakbatal, uh, you're going to want to take the road uh, to the south and go all the way down uh, where you get to the Drabner's Grotto. You're going to fight through a ton of enemies through Drabner's Grotto. And then on this road coming out of it, you're going to talk to and uh, meet an old man. Uh, that old man is going to give you a quest to come to his house on the Windwalker's home. And there you're going to escort him to a sauna where once you escort him to a sauna or, or like a volcanic bath, uh, his wife will come up to you and unlock the magic archer vocation for you. Uh, it's pretty easy, straightforward quest to get, uh, but you don't get it until you're pretty late in the game because it's in the like most south area. It's technically the last vocation that you unlock. Uh, so I, uh, me personally, I played the Mystic Spearhand before I unlocked Magic Archer. It was fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, but that is how you unlock the Magic Archer vocation. Next up, let's talk about skills. Now, the Magic Archer gets a ton of variety of skills. You've got frost skills, you've got fire skills, you've got lightning skills, uh, you've got skills that support your teammates, you've got skills that heal your teammates, give them barriers, you've got ways to apply debuffs to enemies, like making them go to sleep, um, and after playing with basically every single one, this is my favorite loadout that I rock for about 99% of content, um, and that is Recovery Arrow, Martyr's Bolt, uh, Sagittate Avalanche, and Blaze Fang Arrow. Uh, let's start with the top. Now... Recovery Arrow is an arrow, uh, it's an advanced form of Remedy Arrow uh, that allows you to shoot an arrow at a downed ally and revive them. Later on in the game, um, enemies hit pretty hard, uh, dying is not good in the end game, and so this allows you to revive your frontline uh, NPCs from way back behind cover from a safe space, you can revive them, and the thing that this arrow doesn't tell you is you can not all, you can also heal NPCs before they die. So if an NPC is low, you just shoot this arrow at them and it heals them. And it also heals you, which it also doesn't say. Um, you can shoot this at an NPC if they're close to you. Um, if, for example, after a fight, you, an enemy is low and you're low, uh, you can just shoot this at anything. And as long as it explodes close to you, it will full heal you. Uh, so this makes you not have to use healing potions a lot of the times, which is fantastic. And it's a free revive. Uh, there is other skills that heal your allies, but they don't revive them. So that's why Recovery Arrow is, in my opinion, the best like health skill. Uh, and trust me, uh, with this class, you're going to want to be in the back line. You're going to want to keep your front lines um ahead of you uh, so that you're not taking aggro and so you can keep reviving them over and over with recovery arrow i freaking love it uh the next thing let's talk about blaze fang arrow now blaze fang arrow uh is the my favorite aoe skill with our loadout we've got recovery arrow for healing we've got sagittate avalanche for single target we've got martyr's bolt for boss nukes which we'll talk about in a second and then we needed an aoe skill uh bolt chain stake fires this lightning stake that chains to a bunch of enemies that's pretty cool for aoe doesn't do a, as much damage ricochet hunter is an incredible skill one of the best skills but it only really works in close caverns and you're just not in close caverns that much but it is really strong when you do get to use it just didn't think it was worthwhile to have on my bar all the time but this is a fantastic skill uh, and candescent orb is a pretty mid AoE skill and Frost Hunter Bold is also kind of a mid AoE skill. Uh, Blaze Fang Arrow is my favorite though, um, and it does a ton of damage. Now, what this does is it launches you as an arrow. Basically, you get to control the arrow, and when you uh, hit, it detonates and explodes. Now, you don't need to be direct impacting enemies with this, which is why it's so good for AoE. It will explode, as you can see in this image, basically all the enemies around it. However, there is a trick to using it uh, that I found out after many, many hours of messing around with it that makes it so much better to use. So let's say I'm trying to hit an enemy that's like this wall. 
Uh, if I Blaze Fang arrow the wall, uh, I have to basically leave my body vulnerable, fly this arrow, which is pretty slow, and explode it on them. Um, and then I get brought back to my body, and then I can attack again. Not super efficient, but it is a ton of damage. However, if you, when you fire the Blaze Fang arrow and shoot it, and then hit the cancel button after it's already in motion, you can cancel the arrow and then fire another one and then cancel the arrow. And then this massively improves your fire rate. Uh, so what you're doing is you're shooting and canceling it and the guidance still works. So let's say I shoot the arrow here. I can redirect it towards this beam, cancel it. Boom, now we've got massive explosions. And you can use this to fire out from behind cover, direct them towards enemies, cancel. Uh, it's so, so powerful. Um, and with that little trick, it makes the skill 10 times better. The next weapon skill to talk about is Sagittate Avalanche. This is your bread and butter skill for Magic Archer. Uh, it is my favorite skill. Once you get this, you're not going to use too much else. It does single targets. Uh, it does bossing. I don't really recommend it for mobbing, which is why we keep Blaze Fang Arrow on. Uh, but the amount of damage that this skill does is absurd. Uh, if you are targeting weak spots with it, such as a Cyclops Eye, a Sauron's Tail, um, you will just one-shot them with this skill. Uh, it's fantastic. It does consume quite a bit of stamina to use, uh, which is why we'll, when we get into our augments, we're using a lot of stamina things. And then our last skill is Martyr's Bolt. Martyr's Bolt is your big Oonga Boonga. Uh, this does ridiculous amounts of damage. It'll do an entire griffin in a single shot. It'll do like four bars of a dragon's health bar in a single use. It's crazy, and it does scale off of the amount of health that you're consuming. Um, so the more health that you can get, the more damage that you can deal with this, which is fantastic. Um, for the core skills, you're just going to want to pick up just about everything. Um, and then we can talk about augments, which are a, kind of a bit all over the place. For the augments, you can obviously just slap on all the augments from the class. However, I wanted to like min-max and get the most out of my Magic Archer build. So I've got augments from a lot of different classes on me. So to start us off, we've got Veracity. Uh, this will allow you to get some stamina back whenever you kill a target. You're going to be killing targets all the time. So uh, you're consuming a lot of stamina to do those big damage attacks. This will get you that stamina back. Next up is Ambuscade. This is from the Archer. You get increased damage dealt by your attacks when targets are not in battle stance. This basically just means that if a target isn't aware of your presence, you're going to get increased damage against them. You get to fire the first shot in combat basically every single time. So this is fantastic. Next up is Endurance from the Archer. It's going to increase your max stamina. Once again, we do get pretty stamina reliant. Then we're going to use Subtlety from the Thief. This decreases the likelihood of being targeted by foes. Once again, you are the character with the revive skills and the healing skills. Um, and so this is great. You don't have great abilities if an enemy gets right up in your face. Uh, it's ba basically the big weakness of Magic Archer is if melee enemies just kind of swarm you. Um, and so Subtlety decreases your chance of being targeted, which is very nice. Next up, we've got Vitality from the Warrior. It increases our maximum health, which allows us to deal more damage uh, and have more survivability, but more damage with our Martyrdom Arrow. Uh, and then lastly, we've got Polarity. Uh, this augments your strength during the day and your magic at night. You're going to deal more magic damage at night. Now, uh, the I would replace Polarity with the Sorcerer's um, Magic Augment. The Sorcerer at like max rank gets a Augment that improves your magic damage. That would be what I'd replace with Polarity. I just haven't ranked up my Sorcerer to max level yet, uh, so I do need to work on that. But uh, Polarity is what I've got from the uh, Spear class right now. Now let's talk about gear. Now I will have a section at the end of the video for where to acquire this gear. I just want to show you what I'm using right now. And then if you want to know exactly where to find it, I'll have that at the end of the video. So for those of you that don't want like location spoilers, you won't have to see any of that. So uh, the best bow that you can get in base game, it dirt like in the campaign is the Dragon's Breath bow. Uh, this is what I leveled with in campaign. It's fantastic. Uh, it does a ton, a ton of damage. But for like the later part of the end game, uh, if you don't know how to access the end game, I have a video on that. I'll have it linked as a pinned comment for the like the five things I wish I knew uh, before getting into the game. But the best bow in the game for Magic Archer, at least from all of my playtime and finding, uh, is the Grand Mahar. Uh, this is a bow that's got dragon heads twisting on both sides of it. Uh, mine currently has 895 magic damage on it, which is absurd. Uh, it does tons and tons and tons of damage. Um, for the armor, I've gone a little bit for, like, good armor, but also, like, 
fashionable armor. It's not the most fashionable, but the ancient uh, gala uh, is the best helmet for magic archer that I could find. Uh, it's got a ton of defense and magic defense. Uh, for the armor, I'm playing a female character, so I've got the elegant petticoat, uh, which got a ton of defense, magic defense, and resistances with the braided boots. This is the matching set. Once again, I'll talk about where to get this stuff. Uh, but this works for a ton of different vocations, uh, which worked out perfectly for me because it's a set that I can like bounce between. Uh, I've got the Uniter's Mantle, the cape that you're wearing. just really doesn't matter all that much. Uh, they can be a little bit of boost, but for here, I just recommend going for like fashion over function. Uh, the ceremonial cape is also pretty dope looking. I rock that sometimes. For the rings, I'm wearing the Ring of Triumph. This gives you health, stamina, and uh, weight that you can carry, which is just nice quality of life ring. And the Ring of Skullduggery, which increases the damage dealt when you're attacking foes from behind. Uh, because foes aren't really going to be targeting you, you can position yourself to deal extra damage to them with the Skullduggery, which is really nice. Next up for like party composition, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this, uh, but I had a fighter as my main pawn. I wanted someone who was really good at drawing aggro and tanking. Um, my Lionitis had the Molten Fury weapon, the uh, Feather Light Pelta shield. Uh, for body armor, I had the Grand Cuirass and the Brutal uh, Cuses. For uh, armor with the Lupine Cape, I just thought this made my pawn look freaking sick. Um, and then for the rings, this is the real important part. Uh, the ring of vehemence allows the wearer's attacks or my fighter to more likely to stagger and knock down foes. This gives him more crowd control. Fighters are tanks. They also have a lot of CC. Uh, so this is perfect for fighters. And then the ring of disfavor uh, increases the likelihood of being targeted by foes. The fighter already has a taunt skill to taunt enemies, and then when they're not using that, they've got the disfavor, so they're even more likely to, to be targeted. Uh, this allows you to basically free cast in the back, and you've also got that recovery ring, or the recovery arrow, so if your pawn ever does get low, you can just fire it at them, um, and then if they die, you could just revive them. It just works out really, really well. Uh, you're gonna want a strong frontliner for you when playing this class. For my party composition, uh, I liked having a sorcerer in my party, Sorcerers bring a ton of damage to the table, and pawns uh, that are sorcerers will just channel the abilities and cast ridiculous amounts of damage all the time. Uh, the sorcerer really starts to pop off at endgame, and having one in your party for that big AoE damage that they bring is fantastic. Uh, you could use an archer, because archers also range damage, and then you'd have a physical damage dealer and a magic damage dealer, uh, which is nice against enemies that are resistant to magic. I just think that the Sorcerer is a little bit better damage-wise uh, for your party than an Archer is. Just personal opinion. Uh, and then I would bring another Frontliner. Uh, I used a Warrior for a bit. I ended up preferring just having two Fighters right up in the front, being the Tanks, being the Brawlers, and then two Magic Range Damage Dealers, and that seemed to work out really well. Just my personal preference of party. Next up for Equipment Locations, uh, the Grand Mahar Bow. Uh, which is the best magic archer bow in the game, uh, can be found or bought from the, like, wayside shrine. Uh, this is the area that, like, unlocks later. It's, like, right in the middle of the sea, an island pops up. Uh, but you need to go here in the true ending is only when you can buy this bow. Uh, if you don't know what the true ending is for the game, uh, there are spoilers associated with it. I have a video, once again, that'll be in a pinned comment. Uh, but you unlock that bow in the endgame. The, like, Dragon's Breath bow, uh, once you go to the cottage to uh, unlock Magic Archer, I bought the Dragon's Breath in the Volcanic Island camp. Um, and then the armor uh, that I bought, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was in the excavation site. Uh, there is not a, like, smithy, but there's actually, like, an NPC on the side of the road. Uh, at least it was for me, like, in the start of here, uh, where you can go up and talk and buy basically all of the equipment that I'm wearing right now. It is, once again, kind of at the very end of the game, so it kind of makes sense that the best armor uh, that I found would come from there. Um, but that is where I got that armor and the bow. Both the Ring of Vehemence and the Ring of Triumph, uh, the Ring of Triumph that I use on myself and the Vehemence that I use on my ally uh, or my pawn, uh, you get from turning in secret tokens in the pinned comment video. I have a little tip on how to find these pretty easily. Um, so you get both of those there. Um, and the end game helmet that I'm wearing, uh, the Galia, you also get the exact same place that you get the Grand Mahar. 
Uh, it is a endgame helmet uh, from that same Bay Wayside Shrine a Dragon NPC. Just note that in order to buy uh, the Grand Mahar and this helmet, you need, uh, I think it's like a total of 150-ish Dragon Crystals. Um, so you're going to want to kill a bunch of dragons in your playthrough because the end game NPC vendor basically just trades in dragon crystals. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, and yeah, guys, that is going to do it for the video. If I missed anything, I'll probably have a link in the description to like item locations because I didn't write down every item that I found. Uh, so I might have been missing some things that I referenced. But I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. I hope this gave you an idea of some of the best skills for Magic Archer and ways to play it and some little tips and tricks for it. I will catch y'all on the next one, guys. Take care. Peace.